Hey folks, Dan Carr here. Today we are going to take a look at the Mindshift Rotation 50 litre. Now before we get into a thorough look around all of the features of this bag, I just want to talk quickly about the Rotation series as a whole, because there have been some changes with these new version 2 packs. So, we used to have the Rotation 180 Panorama, Rotation 180 Horizon, and the Rotation 180 Professional. The naming scheme has been simplified. We now have Rotation 22, Rotation 34, Rotation Pro 50. Okay, so those numbers obviously correspond to the volume of the bag in liters, and this 50 liter is therefore a direct replacement for the previous Rotation 180 Professional. Okay, so now we've got that figured out, let's get into the features. I'm going to do my usual kind of uh, in-depth walkthrough of this, but if you want to see more photos of this, particularly of it being worn on somebody's back, then uh, head to the description below. You will find a link to the review that is on the website. Okay, let's start with the features on the top part of the bag here. The previous version of the Rotation 180 Professional, the larger one in the lineup, did not have uh, a stuff pocket on the front of the bag. It had a zippered pocket down the side. Uh, this adds this nice big stuff pocket here, which we can unclip with straps on either side. And I'll just pull it back. So basically this is just a big volume in the front that is separated from the rest of the bag. It's really useful for putting your quick access clothing items, your rain pants, rain jacket, particularly if they've already gotten wet and you want to keep them away from your camera gear. So this is just a big, big dump pocket there. There's a lot of adjustability on the cinch straps for this pocket. So you can load this up and then you can really tighten on those cinch straps and it just compresses the front of the bag to keep it a little bit smaller. So that's really cool. That is a new feature of this version two pack. We also have these daisy chains here. These are useful for carabiners, clipping smaller items on here, small water bottle, gloves, things like that. Uh, always useful to have a few of those around. Other things that we see right on the front here, well, I guess let's talk about the material. This is all DWR coated nylon. DWR means that it is water resistant. It's not waterproof, but it's heavily water resistant. They sell a, rain cover for this it's optional uh, it's about 29.99 i believe for the 50 liter size and that will be necessary for really only people that live in very very wet climates there is enough water resistance in this dwr coating that i've been out in plenty of rain showers and i just don't have a problem with it so although i do have the rain cover I'm not sure that I've ever actually used it. Actually, that's not true. Uh, I was in Cambodia in the rainy season once with the previous version of this bag, and that was torrential rain for several hours, and I did use the rain cover then. So, yeah, if you think you might be in that kind of situation, maybe grab the rain cover. But for most people, I think the just general water resistance of this will be good. The base of the bag is different material. This is 400D nylon. It has a bit of structure to it. It's a little bit thicker. You can kind of hear when I'm tapping it there, it's harder. It's not soft like this. Obviously that is to give you abrasion resistance on the base of the bag when you're putting it down on the ground all the time. Okay, uh, what else have we got here? Tripod. Okay, so we see the little tripod symbol here. If I pop this open, we'll see there's a tripod cup and a little strap. So if you put the feet of your tripod into that, secure it with that strap, then you come up here, find this other green tab. In here is the top strap for the tripod as well. So if you want to carry your tripod on the front of the bag, that's how you're going to do it. What I like about this setup is these are always part of the bag. You don't have to remember additional straps to take with you. They're always there. You just tuck them away like this and uh, yeah know that you've always got a way to carry a tripod now if i'm carrying my smaller hiking tripod my travel tripod um, i got a couple really right stuff uh, ascend 14 or my peak design travel tripod those ones are lightweight i'll happily put those on the front if i'm using a larger two or three series tripod i prefer to put them on the side because it doesn't then pull your body weight uh, pull the bag weight backwards so much so on the side here we've got this big gusseted pocket here uh, gusseted so that it will take up to a two liter nalgene bottle and actually then there's even then still additional room either side of it when you do that but you can put a tripod in there as well tripod feet in there side strap to secure the top of the tripod 
Um, we also have on the side here, let me just show you, you can see these toggles too. All of the main opening areas have these really nice glove friendly toggles. So if you're in a cold climate where you shoot with gloves, you're not gonna have any issues pulling zippers. So here we have a little side pocket and you can attach a water bladder here. So that's what this little green thing is for. Hook your water bladder in there and you can get, it's pretty big actually, it goes all the way to the bottom there. So uh, you can put a two liter water bladder in there from most uh, companies that make those kind of things. And then there's a hose exit port right here. So that can come out and then you can attach that to your shoulder strap there. So bladder pocket, if that's how you wanna carry water. It's also kind of a handy uh, long pocket to put other items in there. I can actually put my, my gimbal in there, which is metal and I wanna keep that away from banging into other equipment. So this is also a handy sort of long additional pocket. Okay, so again, that's gusseted there. So you actually have a lot of volume in the side here. I'm not sure how many liters that is, but you can get a lot more than just uh, a two liter bladder in there. A lot of options there. Okay, let's zip that up. Where should we go now? Well, let's go to, let's go to the lid pocket of the bag here. So I'm gonna pop the two clips open. Incidentally, there's a couple of straps going on here on the front because you've got cinch straps for the stuff pocket and you also have your regular straps for the lid. Now they are sized differently, so you can't accidentally plug the wrong clips into each other. So that's kind of a handy little feature. So let's pop open the lid. Now, when I do that, in fact, you know what? So this lid is actually re entirely removable from the bag, and I'm just gonna do that right now uh, and pop this aside because then I can show you the lid a little bit easier. See, there we go. So. Um, the inside of the lid has a big zipper in it and that is divided into two sections. So you've got a mesh pocket if you want to put stuff in there that you want to be able to see. And then you have this other pocket here, which has a handy little clip in it. So this clip here is, I guess it could be for your keys, but I use it for my memory card wallet. Um, never want to lose the memory card wallet because, you know, big expensive uh, memory cards these days. I have thousands of dollars worth of memory cards in my wallet, so that has to be secure. So I use this little clip. Uh, if we flip over the top, this would be on the top of the bag. We have another pocket here. So this would be resting directly on top of the pack. In this pocket, here you're gonna put your quick access snacks, your gloves, maybe a hat, those kind of things that you just want in a hurry. It's it's actually, it's pretty big. I'd say there's there's nearly a couple of liters of storage space in here. So if you have a little accessory pouch for camera gear as well, that's gonna fit really nicely in there. More daisy chains on the top. Um, and I, I guess the fact that this removes is also a handy feature. So I'll tell you how I use this. I traveled uh, pre-COVID, because I'm recording this during the pandemic. Uh, Pre-COVID, I did travel with this bag on a plane. And what I did was I put all of my accessories that I wanted to access on the plane. So I have my little battery charger, I have my headphones, that kind of stuff. I put all of that into the lid pocket here. And then once I got on the plane, I put the backpack in the overhead and I took this off and I stuck this, you know, just in the seat pocket in front of me. So this had all of the things that I needed on my flight, which was really handy. Um, this, if you, if you were taking this bag, uh, overnight camping or something like this. Again, this would be another use for that. You put the stuff that you want uh, inside your tent, you know, headlamp, that kind of thing. And then you would take this in with you and leave the bag outside in the tent vestibule. So it's handy that you can take the lid off here. I'm gonna leave it off the bag for now, just because there's so much going on with this bag. Uh, the simpler I make it, the easier it'll be for you guys to see. So this is the top section of the bag. If I lie this out flat, you can see how much additional volume there is in this top part of the bag here. So this is a huge kind of open stuff section of the bag. This is a big change from the previous version of the Rotation 180. They did not have this. This whole thing here is just done with a cinch cord here. So stuff whatever you want in the top there and then cinch it up with that strap. Now, what's also cool about this is this lid pocket here, when it's sitting on top of the bag, it floats up and down. So you have some adjustability in the strap length. It means you could overstuff the top of the bag and the lid just floats up and down uh, based on 
how long you make these straps here. So you can really stuff a lot of things into this top section of the bag, uh, which is great if uh, you want to go overnight camping, something like that. You'd have to pack pretty, you know, ultra light, but there is still space in here and it's a 50 liter bag after all. So ultra light campers will know that you can easily get uh, a tent, a sleeping bag, you know, roll mat, a stove and some food for a night, maybe even two nights into the kind of volume that you have in the top of this bag. So that's really great um, addition to this bag because if you're taking large items in and out of the top, like a sleeping bag, then it's much nicer to have this huge opening at the top than the previous version, which just had a small zippered opening. So that's the top section of the bag. That is a big change to note from the previous version. Um, let's have a look on the front here. You can see there is a zipper. This is a YKK AquaGuard zipper. So uh, we got some great water resistance on these external zips. If I pop this open, we will see, actually I'll, I'll note that this zipper here, when you open it up, it goes all the way down to the side like that. So it gives you really easy access to the contents of this section. Uh, here we have a laptop sleeve. So this will take up to a 15, 16 inch laptop, depending on your brand, 16 inch MacBook Pro will fit. Some PCs tend to be a little thicker, so you might be limited to a 15 inch but uh, slightly padded there, just enough padding. If you're traveling and you want to take one bag, put your laptop and camera gear and everything, you've got that option there. This tab here is another location to store a water bladder. So if you don't want to put it on the side, because potentially you've got a huge tripod on the side, you can put the water bladder in the front here. Okay, so that's what that little thing's for. Um, and then just in general, as well as the laptop, there is a ton of space in here. Um, you can put, gosh, filter cases, pretty much anything in there, additional clothing. Um, it's not as easy to access because you've got the straps from the stuff pocket on the front kind of tightened up. So I wouldn't want to put quick access items in there. Those would be definitely in your top pocket or in the stuff pocket on the front. Uh, but there is still a lot of storage volume there. Okay, so let's zip this up. All right, where are we going now? Uh, did we talk about these? We've got we've got ice axe loops slash trekking pole loops on the bottom here, two of them, and these have elastic uh, retainers, I guess I'll call them, on the top here. So if you're putting your hiking poles or an ice axe or both on the front here, you have an easy way to store those. These elastic retainers are actually pretty wide and stretchy. I've used this to carry a camping chair as well, uh, which sometimes I sit in if I'm doing wildlife photography and I know I'm going to be sitting around for a while. So easy to stash things on the front of the bag uh, using this elastic toggle and these little uh, loops on the bottom there. Okay, let us, uh, let's flip this over. So on the back here, we have improved ventilation uh, from the previous version. This takes the same mesh backing and this green foam stuff that was first introduced on the Backlight Elite uh, bag from Mindshift. Um, this gives better ventilation and it's just, it's a lot more comfortable. So that's nice. Um, I like the color scheme of that too. That's really cool. But uh, it, yeah, that's an improvement from the previous version. We have a hugely adjustable harness system here. I don't even know, it's at least 10 points of adjustment. Uh, we've got the usual uh, emergency whistle on the sternum strap there. Uh, we've got adjustable torso length. So just under these load lifters here, if I was to loosen that slightly, you can see that we can actually remove the attachment point and move it up or down. So there's three points of torso adjustment here to help this fit people that have uh, a little bit of a shorter torso or taller people. So that is also an improvement from the previous version. And in fact, there is torso adjustment on all sizes of the rotation packs in the lineup now. So that is awesome. Uh, we also have better padding and uh, ventilation in the shoulder straps on this version, the 50 liter versus the 34 and the 22. So those, the 22 is $249, uh, $299 for the 34. And there's a big jump up to this 50 liter at 449. And with that, you get a lot more features. You get a lot more uh, of the expensive materials. So 
you can kind of see the the patterning the 3d patterning that's inside the squishy shoulder strap there's a lot of ventilation going on in there and uh, it's it, it is it is a step up in comfort so that you can carry the kind of loads that you're able to fit inside such a large bag like this okay let's flip these out of the way and this is a change it's not a change from the original version of this bag but it's something that is a big difference between this and the smaller versions the smaller versions do not have an opening back panel so with this 50 liter we can actually open up the back panel to access gear that we've stashed in here we have a zippered mesh pocket in here which has another attachment point for keys or a memory card wallet things like that and yeah i mean that gives you just a different way to access things if you've got stuff stacked up in a layer and you want to get to something that's at the bottom there is that option but it also is an important feature for using with the optional accessory which is called the stash master pro so let me grab that right now and i'll show you okay so most of the camera equipment that you're carrying uh, in the Rotation 50 in its default setup is in the belt pack, which we actually didn't get to yet. But if you want to carry a lot more camera equipment, you can put uh, this optional camera storage cube into the top of the bag. So this is called the Stashmaster Pro. And when it's put into the top of the bag, you can access it from the top zippered section like this. Or we have a front section like this. So when this is placed into the bag, you open the back panel of the pack and that's what gives you access to this section. So I just, uh, I tuck this underneath when I'm sticking this in the bag. And then when you open the back panel of the pack, you will have direct access to what is actually a pretty huge uh, amount of storage here. So you can even fit, just to demonstrate this, I've got a Sony 200 to 600 lens. Um, I can get this inside there so you can fit something like a Tamron uh, 150 to 600 in there as well so that's kind of the maximum length but as you can see one two three four five six something like six lenses in a camera could fit in here depending on the lens sizes so this adds a lot of storage to the rotation 50 liter I feel like this is almost a must-have accessory it's not cheap. I think it's $74.99. Uh, I'll stick a link in the description just in case that's wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I think this is kind of a must have accessory. I, I like that this gives a bit of structure to the top of the pack. And even if I don't fill it with camera gear, I'm often putting my other outdoor accessories in here. Uh, things like my GPS, just additional battery pack. It's just a nice way to organize things. So I do think this is probably worthwhile having. I know that makes the overall cost of the pack plus the stash master uh, pretty high but it's still comparable with the top end packs that you're getting from other brands like f-stop and shimoda uh, guru gear things like that so it's not it's not outrageously priced but you are definitely getting into the very high end of uh, outdoor photography packs when you add this to the already reasonably high cost of the rotation uh, this is a great accessory though also handy just for storing gear uh, in your office you know if you wanted to do some organization uh, keep your lenses nice and tidy then this is you know slide it onto a shelf really easily we've got attachment points here for a shoulder strap uh, it does not come with a shoulder strap but you can clip any old strap to it here so you might also find that that's useful if you for example got to the airport and you had the dreaded uh, can I weigh your camera bags uh, moment where <laughs> They want to weigh your camera bag and see uh, how overweight things are and then they tell you you have to check your your backpack well you could grab this out of the top of the bag put as much camera gear in it as you wanted to and then just carry this onto the plane and stick it under the seat in front of you safe in the knowledge that at least you've got your most expensive and important equipment with you in this little padded cell so uh made from all the same materials and uh yeah great accessory like I said, probably a must have for people buying into the 50 liter rotation system. Okay. Gosh, there's so many features of this bag. I hope I'm remembering everything. Uh, we've done all of the additional pockets and zippers and openings. Uh, I think it's time to get onto the rotation 180 section of this bag. Now this is kind of the, the main feature of this series. Um, this allows you to get very fast access to your camera equipment without taking the bag off your back. 
And to demonstrate that, you'll see a video rolling on the screen in front of you. Um, that just shows you how, how easy it is to get this camera out, take a shot, and get back on your way again. So you don't have to worry about wasting time taking the bag off. You don't have to worry about your friends getting too far ahead of you because you're faffing around taking your bag off your shoulders and unzipping it and, and all that kind of stuff. And we've all been in that situation where we think about whether it's worth getting the camera out to take a photo, whether it's worth that hassle. And you don't have to make that choice with this bag because it's so easy. You just uh, pop open the side and then get the camera out, take the shot. So let's show you again how you do that. We just pull the toggle here and this flips up. OK, so you can actually adjust the tension on the elastic that flips this up uh, right here. There's a little toggle. So that will adjust how far this springs open when you unlatch the magnetic latch, which we have down here. So I'm going to take out the rotation belt pack and we'll have a look at that in more detail. So here we have the rotation belt pack that, you know, this is actually, let me move the lid out of the way. This is actually a camera bag uh, in and of itself. You could use this on its own. Uh, you could go hiking with this. You could go climbing with this. Um, you could use this, you know, just as a, as a smaller travel bag when you get to a location and you don't want to carry your huge backpack. So this is uh, really nicely padded and just as well protected from the elements as the main backpack itself. So let me just give you a quick look around there. On the top here, we have a flat zippered pocket. Uh, you can't put too much in this, but it's good for uh, smaller paper items, I would say, passport, tickets, that kind of stuff, if you want to hide that away. What's nice about this is that if you are using this inside the backpack, uh, this is safe from pickpockets because nobody's going to be able to rotate this out of the bag without you noticing, of course. So um, yeah, money, passport, things like that, things you want to keep safe are great in this top flat pocket. Uh, on the side here, we've got a, a reasonable sized pocket. The shape of this is a little bit odd. I kind of wish it was a little bit longer so that you could fit a phone in it. Um, they do have an accessory phone holder, which you can uh, add to the shoulder strap of this bag. But this is good for items like uh, small granola bars and things like that. Maybe a headlamp if you're hiking at dawn or dusk that kind of time. It's a good place to stuff that. So pocket on one side. The other side, there is a rail here, which you can attach uh, small pouches to filter cases, lens cases, that kind of thing. So you just stick them through that rail. There you go. You can see that there. Uh, on the side, we got these adjustments, which you can pull to bring the weight of this hip pack closer to your hips. These are really needed only when you're just wearing the, the hip section, this pouch on its own when it's not in the backpack. OK, let's open this up. Now, a big change here from the previous versions is we now have these little flappy things on the top there. And that is because the lid is not just held by zippers, but we also have magnets. So if I close this now, you can maybe hear that. We actually have a series of magnets that runs all the way around the rim here. Now, the reason for that is basically to make one handed extraction of the camera possible. So when you swing this around onto your front now, you don't have to worry about undoing the zippers. I only do these zippers up when I'm traveling with it for a long period and I know that I don't want access to the camera. On a regular day when I'm hiking with it, I don't bother with that and I just let the magnets take care of closing this. Once this is inside the bag, that's never going to be able to come open anyway. So as you saw in the previous video when I was out in the field using this, when you swing it around to your front, you now just grab this toggle and with one hand, you can just pop the lid open. So previously you had to grab it with one hand and then use the zipper with a second hand. So this makes it a little bit faster and gives you uh, one handed use. Flipping this open, we've got a zippered pocket here. Uh, this is a great place to put memory card holder and batteries if you're just using this on its own without all of the pockets that are in the larger pack. In the back section here, we have a flat place uh, which is good for a small tablet, so iPad mini, maybe the smaller iPad that is not the mini, the one above that, I can't remember what that is, but maybe you have an Android tablet of a similar size, phones, guidebooks, um, that's a great spot for that. There's a little red tab here, so you can clip things to that, clip your keys again, clip your memory card wallet, something like that, if you want to make sure it's secured. 
And then we've got various dividers. So you can set this up to have a camera with a lens attached. It will hold a pro body or a gripped DSLR or mirrorless camera. There is enough sizing there to do that. Uh, so you can attach something like a 24 to 70 and leave it attached, or you can uh, stash the camera and then put lenses either side of it. So two to three lenses will fit in here along with your camera body. Maybe a few other things, uh, depending on if you're using really small prime lenses. Um, you might be able to fit extension tubes in there. And just generally, this is actually, this is actually a fairly large uh, pack. So um, that is kind of all the features of that. If I look at the waist belt here as well, we can see this is pretty thick. So this obviously would be uh, in the pack when you're wearing it. And this is going to take a lot of the load onto your hips. But we also have this ventilation channel to uh, add, you know, just a little bit of uh, air control while you're hiking as well. And you know what? I think that might be it. I'm just looking around to make sure I didn't miss anything. There's so many features on this bag, but yeah, I think, I think that's it. I think the demonstration video was probably helpful for people. Um, now you've been able to have a, a detailed look around the pack and the, I guess, secondary pack, the belt pack here and see how this all works. So in the description below, you will find links to written reviews of all three sizes of bags in the rotation series, the 50, the 34, and the 22. There are also links to videos of the 22 and the 34. So if you're trying to make a decision between one of the bags in this lineup, hopefully that has given you everything you might possibly want to know about all of these bags. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and please hit the bell to subscribe because we will of course have plenty more stuff like this in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.